Welcome back everyone, welcome back to some more Let's Play Sands of Salzar. This will be part 16 of our Let's Play. In the last episode we arrived in uh, the Umbra Cliffs and... Oh, that's the end of the, the week or whatever. And we need to try and get into the tree or something. Are you once again encounter this girl with the long braided hair from Dire Springs? Oh, hello there. We just seem to run into each other all the time, don't we? You here for research too? Are you guys really scholars? Looks like I was wrong about you. She just keeps talking and talking. What are you doing here? Research, of course. They say there's a magical barrier here that hides the path to the real Naguka. I wasn't able to get through the last time, but this time I brought a magic crystal. The barrier should be no problem. Wait, you know how to dispel the barrier? Yes, but my goal is to study the barrier, not to spell it. Perhaps you should change your research topic. You're not the slightest bit interested in the real Naguka. Shia stutters, flushing with embarrassment. She admits that she can dispel the barrier, but she'll need your protection once you're inside. You accept the deal. Cool. Dispel it. Let's go. Uh, we'll just... Save that. In we go. Enter the true Naguka. Yes. You finally arrive in the true Naguka. Compared to the deathly quiet outside, the true Naguka feels like a breath of fresh air. Your surprise is quickly interrupted by a group of bandits. Newcomer or trespasser? A man with a long scar extending from his chin all the way to his forehead asks. There must be... These must be the true people of Naguka. You decide to cut to the chase and ask about the whereabouts of Zarathustra the Dominator. Where is Zarathustra? Zara what? Never heard of him. Sling a cleaver over his shoulder. But look at this, the outsider thinks he's the one who's going to ask questions. I'm not here for a fight. Who cares what you're here for? Die! Just as you prepare for a fight, the banners suddenly cock their heads at the same time, their arms dropping weakly by their sides. They look distinctly like puppets on strings. Interesting. As though their souls have been taken from them. Spiritmancers can sense each other's magic. The best counter for a spiritmancer is therefore an even more powerful spiritmancer. But you sense nothing from the spirit magic being used here. Clearly, there is a powerful spirit man at work here, one whose powers are beyond comprehension. <clears> hmm, <throat> where are you, Zarathustra? Strange head speaking in an impassive voice. Go north, you will find the entrance there. You know why I'm looking for you. You are merely looking for a goal to keep yourself going. Do you truly believe that you have found your goal? Before you can answer, Zaynep picks up a stone from the ground and knocks out the Scarface man with it. The bandits laugh, then fall them to the ground. What are you doing, Zaynep? Why are you still looking for revenge? My sister's been dead for so many years. What will killing this wizard do? Zarathustra is the most likely culprit. And what if he isn't? Who are you going to look for next? Are you going to spend the rest of your life looking for someone whom you don't know whether you'll ever find? I hate you. Jesus. Zaynep runs away in tears. You should go after her. She's important to you, isn't she? She asks. You know how powerful the Dominator is, however. There is no better opportunity to strike than now, after you expend a considerable energy controlling multiple people at the same time. Now we're going to look for Zaynep first. We're, we're definitely looking for her first. There's a fugitive. I said go north, right? We don't want to go north then. What is this? You arrive at the entrance. You tell Shia to wait outside. Yeah. Um, could it be that you really did not do it? You shake your head. You simply cannot imagine your wife betraying you, trying to kill you of her own volition. It simply cannot be. Plus, Zaynep was sure that Zarathustra was the culprit. You take a deep breath and drive the thought from your mind. No, I don't. I don't want to go that way, though. I want to find... Didn't you say go... Didn't you tell me to go north? That's not north, that's west. That's very west. A week has passed, the barrier it later spoke of should be dispelled. Zaynep, there we go. You find Zaynep. She seems to be much calmer. You want to say something, but you are not sure what to say. It is Zaynep who opens her mouth first, clearly making an effort to keep her voice calm. Let's go. You'll have your revenge soon. You feel conflicted inside. You know that she is reluctant to go, but you do not want to think about why. Yes, you tell Zaynep to follow you, but stay out of the but stay out of the fight that could happen. You do not want to force her to do this. Okay. 
Well, let's find out what the go is, shall we? Right. As you trek through this strange place, you are conscious that you are now alone. A white mist begins to obstruct your vision. You see something moving in the mist. The creatures are human in form, but hardly human. They are badly bloated with pale and creased skin like they've been immersed in water for weeks. Ugh. Their hair is sparse and their features are twisted beyond recognition. Water drips from their rotting leather armor with every step they take. A foul smell surrounds you as they approach. Suddenly they charge at you with teeth bared. Oh wow, we are very quick now, are we? Uh, no, that's just pixies. But, like, that's just fairies. We fought plenty of those before. They do kind of suck, I'll be honest, but... Not that bad. The Aussie Nerd. You hear a familiar voice. Over here, the Aussie Nerd. The long-deceased former Khan of the Nazir appears behind you. He sits on a golden couch with a figure of an eagle engraved on each arm, and arm and horsemen are lined up behind it. You helped me take the gates of Jamal's city without a fight. I named you High Priest when you were 16 years of age. You are a generational talent, though you are far from Zarathustra's equal. You ordered me to put the guards to sleep so that the gates could be taken without bloodshed, but you threw the defenseless guards into the river. Death, it is the one true constant of war. The Nazir King merely lifts an arm and bends his fingers. At his orders, iron hooves begin to roar, kicking up great clouds of dust. It would have been a grand scene if it was not in service of war. Oh man, these guys are pretty tough. I mean, they're not as tough as like my whole team, but... I mean, they take a bit of killing. Thankfully, there wasn't many of them. Alright, we good now? A cool breeze blows the mist away and lifts fallen leaves into the air. It is a little valley surrounded by hills full of trees and flowers. She stands amongst the flowers, her hair swaying gently in the wind. Your mouth opens and closes, but no sound comes out. It is as though you are being choked. The fallen leaves lifted into the air by the breeze converge and form the shape of a man. Slowly his features become increasingly distinct, revealing the face of the Nazir King whom you had just fought. Kill the Aussie nerd, Alina, and you will be free. I intend to do so, my lord. You are a woman. Will you find the strength to do what needs to be done? Women do not necessarily have to be weak. You hide countless mercenaries, assassins, yet in the end you must count on a woman. The Nazir hunted King who was foolish and incompetent. All that the world needs to know is that we will usher in a new era. History does not need to know how we did it. People must believe wholeheartedly that we fought for the cause of justice. That is why he cannot be allowed to live. I don't care. All I want is freedom. Complete freedom for myself and for my sister. Elena turns around and looks at you with hard flint-like gaze. Behind her, the Nazir King has returned to fallen leaves, floating upon the wind around the two of you. You feel a pang of pain in your heart. Elena... You finally make a sound, and in your voice is that deep, burning, unforgettable love and pain. Oh wow, I actually have to fight her? Oh wow, she just like, super stabbed me. Oh my god. Okay, uh... She's making a... Ow. Can you stop doing that, please? I guess I can just like run around and eat stuff. You have that. Ow. There, got her. Whew. Ah, you dig your fingers into your scalp, almost drawing blood. Green veins popping out of your forehead as you concentrate with your full will. Zarathustra, get out here where I can see you. You cry with bloodshot eyes. It is as though a storm has passed. Your vision clears and you find yourself back in Naguka on the banks of a river. A lonely wooden hut not far from you. You shift your gaze back and are surprised by the sudden appearance of a man in black robes. The man removes his hood, revealing a head of white hair, wizened feature, and eyes filled with pity and sorrow. You start to cough uncontrollably. 
It is like there are a million things in your chest that you just could not get out, and it's becoming harder and harder to breathe. You are exhausted by the coffin. Your knees buckle and you fall down before the old man. The old man looks down at you wordlessly. His face is covered in shadow, and you see only the glimmer of his pitying eyes. You feel your eyelids grow heavy. In the darkness, you see the bright red of the red rose beside Elena's ear, which turns into a red dagger that stabs you in the heart. Quit the illusion, Zarathustra. You sit up with a start and grab Zarathustra by the collar, glaring into his eyes. A city of sin, the two greatest spirit mantis in the land. It would have been a battle to be immortalized by song and legend, if only there was someone to witness it. I mean, okay, compared to my, like, wife, he ain't that bad. He hasn't even really hit me yet. Oop, okay. I get the feeling I don't want to be hit by him, though. Wow, that was easy compared to my wife. I guess I don't want to be rushed, is the thing. And that's what she did, like, that's what sword fighters do. Ugh some nerve you have to be holding back in a battle like this. It is a battle without meaning. Shut up! Who do you think saved your life? You are a great illusionist, Zarathustra. I'll give you this. Do you not see the truth, or do you simply refuse to? Ask the girl by your side. You look up with great effort and see Zainab standing not too far away. Zainab dares not look into your eyes. Her lips are trembling and tears flow down her face. The Nazir and Darkin were allies when they attacked Jamal's city. Their own differences have caused them to part ways since then, of course. Cut to the chase. The Darkin were expert assassins. Emulating their allies, the Nazir also had their own group of elite assassins, raised from childhood to become deadly killers. They were the Nazir's most dangerous weapon. Your Elena was one of them. So was Zainab. But Elena traded your life for her sister's freedom, because nobody knew that you survived. That's impossible. Impossible. Go, find out for yourself. Reading minds is no difficulty for a spirit mancer like you. You do not need to read Zainab's mind to find out. Her evasive gaze has told you all that you need to know. The winds of Naguka are wet and cold, sending a shiver down your spine. Go, leave this place. Go anywhere. Anywhere but here. Away from here. Away from it all. With great effort, you stand yourself up and begin to limp away. No hesitation in your shuffling steps. Oh, okay. And then we just leave? With an indescribable screeching sound, the gnarled trees wither in a matter of moments, and a foul smell begins to permeate the air of Nakuka, as though the long dead have risen up again from beneath the water. The smell is coming from where you have just passed. Swarms of rats emerge from the underground like a grey tide, fleeing for their lives towards the outside, without regard for any humans who might be in their way. There may be danger at Zarathustra's hideout. A terrible struggle awaits. You dust off your robes and head resolutely toward the source of the danger. A massive object drops down to block your path. It is foul and rotten, reminiscent of dead fish. You destroy the foul object with magic. The monster explodes into countless tiny pieces like fireworks, revealing a terrifying sight. Standing beside the river is what looks like a tall humanoid, to the extent that it could be described as humanoid, or standing for that matter. It is folded over at the waist with its head touching the ground. Extending upwards from the head is what could charitably be described as a long, thick braid. Its arms are also unusually long and folded outwards. You look around but see no sign of Zarathustra or Zaina. Uh, holding Zainab from the arm. She's fine. You stay here. Take care of her. Zarathustra puts Zainab down and goes forth. These are three long bloody... There, the, there are three long bloody gashes on his back. Are you hurt? Soul magic does not affect this monster. Stay here. Uh, fight with Zarathustra. I'm with you. So be it. This won't be easy. The monster raises its head to look up. Its torso remains folded in half. Its movements are stiff and mechanical, like a machine. The more you look at it, the more the monster reminds you of Shia. There is a single eye above its nose, three times the size of what a normal human eye would have looked like covering half its face. Are you Shia? I found it at last, Naguka, the god of time. 
The monster slowly straightens up, and two more pairs of strange, vaguely human arms appear from its armpits and waist. You are reminded of that deity with three heads and six arms depicted on the mural in Big Head's room. Do you remember me? Time. The god of time. I will return to the age of machines. Restore my family's glory. We are the greatest machinists to ever walk this earth. Looks like she awakened this thing of her own volition. The monster turns its gaze to you, as though you're trying to as though trying to devour you with its one eye. Wizards! Kill the wizard! Kill them all! Is it supposed to be doing something? Because it's kind of just sitting there. Oh, okay, it let out little goobers. Okay, the little goobers are bad, this I know, because I have the very same goobers. Boom. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, that's bad. That's, that's a bad spot to be in right there. Yep. Whoop, that looks very bad. Oh, does that lock it in place, maybe? Is that what the, the grabby, the floor grabbers do? Oof, does a bit of damage, doesn't it? Okay, boom. Summon some goobers of my own. There we go. Whew, okay. Machinus. This age does not need Machinus anymore. The body of Shia lies twisted and broken on the ground. Red blood flows from its one eye. Gormond, the god of time, bring me back to the age of Machinus. The body quickly becomes desiccated and begins to decay in white smoke. It is over. All that remains is the carcass of the monster and the three of you. I, the monster. Zainab wakes up and walks towards you with unsteady steps. It's dead. That's good. There is a wry smile on Zainab's face. Can I still be with you? She deceived you. She made you seek vengeance against an innocent man, wasting more than a decade in this desolate land. But if it was not for her, you might never have chosen to return to the world of man. I'll forgive Zainab. Let's go. A rotted claw impales Zaina. Oh no, the monster had one last act of malice left in her. Zaina! Monster! You cut off the monster's arm and cry Zainab's name. With her last breath, Zainab mouths the words, I'm sorry. Then her eyes close forever. Zainab! Oh, it's literally what it just said. It seems like the silence will never end. You hold Zainab in your arms as her blood begins to form a crimson flower on the ground. Unfortunately... Sorry. Unfortunately, I have no knowledge of the healing arts. If only that old friend of mine was still here. He is silent, then suddenly furrows his brow. My, my, this shabby sh shack of mine is certainly getting many visitors today. A hooded wizard comes toward you. You recognize the face of Nassan, the wizard persecuted for using black magic to heal others, whom you rescue in Amaranth Town. Nassan explains that he had become a wanted man since your encounter in Amaranth Town and fled to Naguka to ex escape his pursuers. He caught a glimpse of you amidst the chaos and followed you out of concern for your safety. Hassan rushes to Zainab's side and preserves her waning life force. You leave Zainab in his hands. Time seems to slow down, so much that you hear each and every single one of your heartbeats. So much that nothing seems important or urgent anymore. So much that there seems to be so much time left. So much time. I leave Nakuka. Ooh. For the first time in a long time, you feel aimless. But you know that your sins are etched in time and history, and you must atone for them. Zainab is recuperating in Naguka. You must undertake your journey alone. For a while, at least. A long, long journey awaits. Okay. So, no more Zainab, which is not great. That's pretty good. Uh, do we just have the one ability point? We have more? Sufficient skill points. Yeah, okay, we just have the one. Fair enough. 
Uh, don't suppose we can upgrade any of these guys? No. Talents. These are the good things. Uh, well, if we go for... Is it March? Yeah, if we go March, Force March. Oh, we have another couple of talents. Um... Party max health plus 5% is pretty good, but I think we just go for, like, the heals. Uh, yeah, we'll take these. Yeah. We could have got the large white rose potion every week, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, what I do want to do, though... Is I kind of want to go and... Do you remember... I guess I'm on the way there. Um, yeah. Do you remember, there's like, over here, there's like a big dragon thing. Or down here? Up there? Or somewhere? There's like a little secret, secret dragon... Giant monster that I kind of like, poked a look at. It was there, I think it was. And kind of went, nope. Well, now I sort of want to go look at it see what that's about. I am one hero down though, which feels bad, because each of those heroes counts for quite a bit. Oh man, like I had to just kill Zainab, or at least take her out. So I suspect that I'm not going to get her back. I suspect it'll be like an after I beat the game thing. The way it said, you have to travel alone, and then it's like, oh well, you know, only for now. Nah, that sounds like it's, uh, sounds like it's permanent. Sounds like, oh, you're traveling alone. Oh, but she's not dead. You know, but she's dead for the game. Effectively. Uh, but yeah, I kind of want to go see. See what's with the big, big dragoon. Because big dragoons are usually fun. I mean, unless it attacks me, in which case, not at all fun. <laughs> not, not, not fun at all. Alright, knock knock, giant dragon. Yep, there he is. That's that's him. Oh, can I just like sneak in here and grab all stuff? He sends a sudden strange fragrance floating in the mist. Dryads, there's dryads about. Clamors one of your companions in terror. Your limbs grow extremely heavy and you slowly fade out of consciousness. As you struggle to glance at your comrades, you realize many have already fallen to the ground asleep. Nah, force myself to attack him. Danger level five, I think we'll be okay. Um, pretty sure danger level 5 is, might as well be, yeah, might as well be nothing. You eventually win the bit of fight, but faint under the influence of powerful dryad toxins. When you come to, you discover that the dryads already fled. Fair enough. Uh, right, I just want all your treasure. And then maybe we poke the dragon? Is poking the dragon a bad idea? There's only one of them. Oh, okay, no, he's, he's not that bad. Wow, he looks a lot scarier than he is. He was kind of garbage. Wow. Okay, well, I expected more of a challenge, to be honest. Uh, quest to collect Astrid's debts expired. Ah, that's fine. I, I don't care. Uh, Alright, well, I guess we head to wherever that thing is. We can just follow... Wait, isn't this in... Oh yeah, it is over there. Sorry. Sorry, you're right. It's at Argyll Camp. My bad. So we do go this way. We follow the road, and then that leads us up to where we're headed. Ish. <laughs> just stay on the beaten track, especially in the bloody Umbra Cliffs, because this place is just awful. Would not build a holiday home here. Uh, guessing it's this way. Yep. Okay. See you later. Everything's ready, your highness. Why are the afraid able to create magical barriers? There was a problem. We just finished preparing the enchantment. We came just in time. A free territory lies beyond, in a dark forest to the east of Umbra Cliffs. This enchantment will teleport us directly inside the magic barrier that protects the forest. We don't know what will happen once you're inside a free territory. There's no rush. 
Find me once you're ready. Ugh, let me just go for it. We are a party member down, but I just don't see us getting another one in, like, decent time. We're, we'll still be finding them, you know. We'll still be, like, trying to get them in, like, 20, 20 episodes. So maybe we just go in. We'll fight these monsters first. Why not? We're here. We're here. The monsters are here. We can blast them. Although, I forgot that the Eldar Centaurs are pretty bad, aren't they? Not bad enough. Okay, I, I think we're ready. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. Prop to Bunupia. Sure. There are Sanguinia ahead. There must be a fleet nearby. Sanguinia? You must have seen them to the south of Redstone Keep, that area that was once occupied by the Afrit. They grow all over the place there, looking as though they have been soaked with blood. It's curious. Afrit flames do not burn everything. Their clothes, for example, remain undamaged. Sanguinia in any place that they linger for an ex extended period of time. They seem to be able to control the intensity of their fire, and it becomes much more powerful when they are using it to attack. We can find the Afrit by following the Sanguinia. Uh, sure. I'd say it's just these guys. Hush, to a Afrit ahead. What are they talking about? It's in the Afrit tongue, a language that few if any humans know. It's strange. When I was in the Mirage, I feel like I know what they were saying, even though I didn't understand a single word. They were Afrit in the Mirage. Yes, they... Hush, it's looking this way. I learned a little about the Afrit language under Malak. I can understand the general meaning of what they're talking about, or communicate with you using magic. There is a disturbance in the barrel. Did you notice anything unusual? I thought I heard something, but I didn't see anything. Be careful. The master says the human wizards have been trying to break through. Human wizards? Bah! Once the door is stable and we bring our brothers here from the other world, those human wizards are all going into my belly. At your rank, you'll be waiting for your turn for a long time. Don't even mention the fools who stay behind in the ruins. They've all been... Shh, the master might hear us. You're the one saying dumb things. Get back to your patrols. They start patrolling. We need to reach the camp up ahead. Keep a low profile. Avoid any fighting. Pass through the area and reach the free camp. Be careful not to draw the attention of the three patrols. Hmm. Alright. I think we're going to have to leave this episode here for the moment. So guys... Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more content from me, the Aussie Nerd, feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos on there. If you think there are any friends of mine who enjoy my content, make sure you share a video too with them. Really appreciate it. And finally, if you want to leave any hints, tips, tricks, feedback of videos, or you just want to say hi, make sure you do so in the comment section down below so I can see it. And I'll see all of you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.